This is Vanessa with ASEAN News. China ready to boost COVID-19 vaccine cooperation with Japan. Visiting Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi and Japanese Foreign Minister Toshimitsu Motegi agreed to step up cooperation and communication amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the onset of the pandemic, China and Japan have supported and helped each other in fighting the virus, demonstrating the friendship between the two countries. Wang calls on the two sides to take a longer-term perspective, effectively manage differences, mobilize positive factors and curb negative ones, so that bilateral relations will always move along the right path of peace, friendship and win-win cooperation. Japan appreciates China's support in fighting COVID-19 and is ready to step up cooperation with China in containing the pandemic, said Motegi. The Japanese side is ready to work with China to implement the consensus reached by leaders of the two countries, maintain high levels of communications, and resume consultations and security dialogues between the parliament, economic, trade and diplomatic authorities of both sides. Wong say that under the new circumstances, China is ready to work with Japan to shoulder responsibilities and promote cooperation with a broader vision, more effective actions and in a wider range of fields to bring more benefits to the two peoples as well as the international community. Hostels workers under lockdown after COVID-19 outbreak. Hostels in Malaysia that house workers for the world's largest glove maker, Top Glove, went into lockdown after more than 2,000 workers test positive for the virus. At one of Top Glove's hostels in Meru, located on the outskirts of Malaysia's capital Kuala Lumpur, hundreds of workers are placed under tight surveillance and army personnel guarding the entrance. Malaysia's health ministry reports a sharp rise in cases in the area where the company's factories and dormitories are located, with 2,453 workers testing positive for the virus out of 5,767 screened. The government says 28 factory buildings will be shut in phases, although it did not provide a timetable. Top Glove, which commands a quarter of the global latex glove markets, racks up record profits this year on skyrocketing demand for its products and protective gear thanks to the pandemic. PwC Chairman urges world business joint efforts to recover from pandemic. Robert E. Morris, chairman of PricewaterhouseCoopers, PwC International Network, says during an interview with China Global Television Network recently. World businesses are taking strategies to recover from the COVID-19 shock and many countries in the world need help from China and the United States to assist their economic recovery. Morris, a global business leader who participated in the APEC CEO Dialogues Malaysia 2020, talked about his thought of the transformation and restoration of the global businesses after being hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. They are reconfiguring their assets. They're restarting and restarting with a sense of urgency and energy, with speed and agility and adaptability, and they are reporting. They're reporting to demonstrate the progress they're making against stakeholder needs, not just shareholder needs, to demonstrate what they're doing to be more inclusive with that growth. Morist says the world is a lot more connect and interdependent than disconnect and fragment. During the current COVID-19 pandemic, there are a number of countries in need of help from China and the United States, the two largest economies in the Asia-Pacific region. And the quicker we realize that humanity needs help, and the quicker we recognize that the system that we all have worked so hard at um, and benefited from needs to change and evolve and bring us to a better place, um, that's not limited to the geographic borders. Um, that is applicable across the world, and there's many country worlds that need the U.S. and China uh, to help with that. So. The ones that are more successful and most positive are using a framework. They are repairing the damages that been done, maybe excess debts that been brought on their balance sheet for loss of supply chain or loss of connection with the consumer. They are rethinking their purpose and their business models. Dong Sawan hopes China and Papua New Guinean to strengthen people-to-people -people relations. Don Sawong, the Papua New Guinean ambassador to China, hopes that people-to-people -people relations between the two countries can be strengthened in the future. Ambassador Sawong takes his post in China. He describes his experiences in the last two months as hectic for attending Chinese officials' invitation to discuss bilateral matters, multilateral issues and investment opportunities. Over the years, you know, there's been exchanges between uh, political leaders, senior government officials, 
uh, culminating in 2018 when President Xi Jinping went and stayed in my country. And our relationship now gone up to comprehensive strategic partnership, which means it's a different level of relationship. Papua New Guinea to have forged diplomatic ties with China back in 1976. China's largest trading partner in the region and Ambassador Saung said that current relations are strong. We don't see a lot of Chinese tourists going into Papua New Guinea. I would like to encourage, you know, people to people in that sense to going and be tourists visiting my country. Hope that my countrymen will also come to visit China and see for themselves, mm -hmm. you know, as tourists as businessmen see the opportunities that it offers. While the two countries make progress, the ambassador thinks there is a room to improve when it comes to people-to-people -to -people relations. We've already signed an air service agreement between our countries. Once the Shanghai airport facility is open, we will have two uh, entry points or departure points between China and Papua New Guinea. One from Hong Kong and one from Shanghai, you see. Geographically, population-wise, we are the biggest island countries, almost the Pacific island countries. So it won't be wrong for Chinese investors, Chinese people to go and visit and invest in my country. He acknowledges that steps have already been taken and that things are now in motion to better relations. Saung says he hopes to see the agreements signed between the two countries implemented and that more students from Papua New Guinea will come to study in China. Japanese Prime Minister in China wants to build good working relations. In his first high-level meeting with Beijing, Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says the stable ties with China were important as his country pursues a balancing act with its neighbor. Chinese President Xi Jinping wants to build good working relations with his Japanese counterpart. We have achieved a stable improvement and furthermore, both sides have agreed to continue to develop our relationship in the direction of positive changes and development. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi meets Suga at the end of his two-day trip in Japan, marking the first high-level visit since Suga was elected as a new leader in September. Meanwhile, both sides supported successful Olympic events, the Tokyo Olympics next year, and Winter Olympics hosted by China in 2022. Tokyo implements strike measures in Japanese capital to prevent COVID-19 disease. Tokyo's governor says the Japanese capital urges shorter business hours for bars, restaurants, and asks residents to stay indoors as much as possible in tough concentrated action to tame a spike in coronavirus cases. The curbs are Japan's latest bid to rein in its highest surge in infections, with daily tallies on several recent days exceeding 500 in Tokyo. The city had 54 serious cases, the most since a state of emergency. Tokyo's infection status remains very severe, and especially today. The number of patients with severe condition rose to 54. It is a sharp rise. Governor Yuriko Koike told a news conference. This is an extremely important time of year for business owners, but if you don't stop this now, it's just going to continue. Quaker notes that during a similar request to shorten business hours in the summer, the number of cases fell, and that it was also important to send a message. Establishments will be eligible for cash assistance of up to 400,000 yen or $3,831 if they cooperate in the closures set to run until December 17. Thailand's police blocking in the street area to prevent demonstration in the city. Thailand police in Bangkok fortified the area around an office that managed the Royal Fortune, blocking a main street with shipping containers, although anti-government protesters switched the expected location of protest. The protesters says they will meet at the headquarters of the Siam Commercial Bank, in which the king owns a stake of more than 23%, part of royal assets value in the tens of billions of dollars. Protesters are demanding that the king give up personal control of those assets. Police says that protesters are allowed within 115 meters of the office, and the police plans to deploy nearly 6,000 officers. They begin blocking the streets, creating traffic chaos throughout the city. 
The shipping containers affect my life a lot because I can't work. Protests that began in July this year against Prime Minister Prayu Chan Ocha have increasingly turned to demands to curb the powers of King Mahavajira Longkong, breaking a long standing taboo on criticizing the monarchy. The Philippine health workers hope vaccine breakthroughs beckon restart of overseas jobs. The Philippine healthcare worker Vin Sumali breakthroughs in the race to develop COVID-19 vaccines hope for the end of the pandemic, but more importantly, the chance for overseas works to restart. Umali says his plans of working in Canada in 2020 was derailed due to the pandemic. Um, ayun, so prior to the pandemic, kasi, uh, I started reviewing. Prior to the pandemic, I started reviewing for the English proficiency exam, which is needed for application for my work visa to Canada. However, because of the pandemic, they had to put that on hold since they couldn't conduct face-to-face -face classes. Uh, dahil nga hindi sila nakapag-conduct ng... President Rodrigo Duterte and an overseas travel ban for the Philippine health workers, the labor minister says renewing the hopes of thousands of workers in the industry, although only 5,000 will be allowed to leave each year. Live classes, face-to-face -face classes, and then yung mga... I was happy to hear the news initially up and hearing the headline, but the government will only allow a maximum of 5,000 health care workers per year to travel, as compared to previous years where around 19,000 were allowed. Although it is still limited, I'm glad the travel ban was lifted. The occupational therapist who works in hospital is now more optimistic that his goal of working abroad may soon push through. It is very nice to know even technically the war is still here. At least moving from one place to another or one country to another will be much easier. Drug makers are now in a race to develop a viable vaccine against the coronavirus, potentially leading to a normalization of lives. Pfizer and partner BioNTech releases final late-stage trial data showing their shots was 95% effective. The Philippine ambassador to the United States expects the Pfizer vaccine could get approval from the Philippines authorities by early next year. Russia and China discusses about energy cooperation at the 70th meeting. China and Russia agreed to further promote energy cooperation at the 70th meeting of the China-Russia Energy Cooperation Committee held through video conference. The meeting are co-chaired by Chinese Vice Premier Hang Zheng and Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak via video link. China and Russia energy cooperation maintain a good development momentum under the care and push by Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic and global economic decline, the energy cooperation between China and Russia shown strong resilience with a sharp growth in energy trade, steady progress in key cooperation projects, and continuous new achievements. After the meeting, Hen and Novak signed the minutes of the meeting. And that's all for today. Have a nice day and see you again.